So Windows 11 was just announced and a lot of people quickly realized that their computer might not meet the minimum hardware requirements because of one type of component, a TPM, Trusted Platform Module, on the Windows Requirements page, it specifically mentions a Trusted Platform Module 2.0 chip as a requirement for Windows 11. And if you don't have one of these, if you run the PC Health Check app, which tells you whether you meet the Windows 11 requirements, like me, it will tell you this computer can't run Windows 11. And even though it doesn't exactly tell you why, and a lot of people are confused about this, for the most part, it's down to not having one of these TPM modules. However, if you don't have one of these, or at least the computer says you don't, you might not be totally screwed. In fact, most people probably actually do have it without realizing it might just not be enabled. But if you do have an older computer that doesn't have a TPM chip like mine, it's actually from like 2015, there is still some things you can try. So we're going to talk about all that. So quickly, first of all, what exactly is a TPM module? Now I know TPM module is like saying ATM machine, just deal with it. A TPM module basically does cryptographic functions and it's isolated from the rest of the computer and the processor. So it can do things like creating cryptographic key pairs or storing keys in its isolated module. So the key never actually leaves the computer, but it can still do authorization and stuff so that your computer can still do things like file encryption for a whole hard drive or anything else that might need to use this special thing for cryptographic reasons. An easy way to tell if your computer has a TPM module is you can simply go into the start menu and type in tpm.msc and then it'll pop up a thing. It'll tell you some information about it. Or if you don't have one, like me, it'll says compatible TPM cannot be found. Now there are two versions of TPM that you're probably going to hear about. TPM 1.2 is the older one. It was starting to become more mainstream around 2012. And then TPM 2.0 is the newer one. And that was starting to get released around 2014. So these are not new things. But when it comes to Windows 11, the hardware requirement is not exactly as it seems because on the main Windows 11 page, yes, it does say Windows 11 requires TPM 2.0. However, I found another page that was mentioned elsewhere that has the actual requirements. And specifically, it says there are new minimum hardware requirements for Windows 11. In order to run Windows 11, devices must meet the following specifications. Devices that do not meet the hard floor cannot be upgraded to Windows 11. And devices that meet the soft floor will receive a notification the upgrade is not advised. The TPM 2.0 requirement is actually a soft floor. Okay, I have to pause here because as I was editing, Microsoft actually changed this page and removed talk of hard and soft floor. And now it just straight up says you need TPM 2.0. So keep that in mind while watching the rest of the video. It's only going to come into play later in the video. Also here, they removed the soft floor for CPU generation. So if you have any CPU that is older than eighth generation Intel or equivalent, also, Windows 11 might not work in any case. So we're gonna have to see if they maintain these requirements, but just keep that in mind when watching the rest of the video. And here's the other really important thing. There's actually two types of TPM modules. It could be FTPM, firmware TPM, or DTPM, discrete TPM. A discrete trusted platform module means that it's a actual physical separate chip, but a firmware trusted platform module means it could be actually built into the CPU itself and basically the CPU has a certain section where it can do all the functions of TPM, but it doesn't have to have a separate physical thing. But here's the thing, basically at least every CPU manufactured in the past three years or so does have a firmware TPM module. It might not show up in Windows if it's not enabled because you do have to go into the BIOS to enable it. We will talk about older CPUs. It's not like anything before that doesn't have it. We'll get to that. But if Windows says that you don't have one of these, what you should do is go into your computer BIOS and look for one of the two things. If you have Intel, it's going to be called Intel Platform Trust Technology or PTT. And if it's AMD, as far as I know, it's just going to be called FTPM. So both of these technologies are FTPM. It's just AMD simply calls it FTPM. And then Intel has a special name for it. They call it PTT, but they're both FTPM. And also from my understanding, there's no FTPM that's just TPM 1.2. If you have FTPM, it's going to be 2.0 supported. Therefore, if your computer does say it has a TPM chip that is only 1.2, that means that it is a discrete physical separate chip. But the big question a lot of people are asking is, does my CPU and which CPUs have this TPM thing installed without having to necessarily go through the BIOS and search for it? Well, like I said, basically all CPUs that are made at least from 2018 onward have FTPM as a built-in standard feature for both Intel and AMD. That's because in 2018, Intel announced what they called Intel Security Essentials, which is basically a standard feature set of security features that they are putting into 
all of their CPUs. And that includes TPM or what Intel calls PTT, Platform Trust Technology. So basically every CPU made after 2018 or so will have TPM. But again, that doesn't mean that anything before it doesn't. It just means you're pretty much guaranteed to have it if it's after that. Now from my research, AMD is a similar story. So going back to the original Zen architecture, so the original Ryzen processors around 2017, all of those onward also had FTPM built into it. There's not as many details I could find on AMD side about this, but apparently this is part of their PSP or platform security processor. And again, basically all their newer CPUs have that. So that's why TPM is included in those. Now, if your CPU is manufactured before 2017 or 2018, like mine was, hold on because not all hope is lost. Like I said, there were plenty of CPUs that were manufactured before then that did have TPM. Here's the other important thing though, even if your CPU made before that doesn't have a FTPM thing installed in the CPU itself, there's a good chance that your motherboard may actually have a connector where you can plug in your own TPM module, you'll just have to buy it separately and we'll go over all that. So anyway, for older Intel CPUs, supposedly they were saying that their PTT, Platform Trust Technology, launched way back in their fourth gen Haswell CPUs. But in the real world, everything I've been reading seems to be that this isn't actually true. And from what I've read in forums and stuff, no one with a Haswell CPU seems to be able to find this in the settings. It's just not supported, even though supposedly this feature was introduced in there. So I don't know what the deal is. Okay, another update I found in the document I was looking at, I had missed that the list of features which include PTT on fourth gen Haswell, it only lists them under U and Y processor lines, which are ultra thin and mobile processors. So basically it looks like PTT was only in Haswell for mobile laptops and stuff like that. From the forums I've been reading, basically only Intel sixth generation on seem to be having this PTT. But before that, it's supposed to, but apparently doesn't. So basically, if your Intel CPU is sixth gen or Skylake, basically 2015 onwards, it should also still have an option for PTT in the BIOS. Now, I know for a fact that Intel was adding PTT to CPUs as early as 2014, which would have been around the same time as fourth gen Haswell, because I found a pretty ancient press release from HP for one of their laptops, and it specifically mentions TPM 2.0 and 1.2, where it says that TPM 1.2 is from hardware, and it says that TPM 2.0 is through Intel's PTT, which was Broadwell fifth gen at the time. So you'll just have to kind of see if you have a fourth or fifth gen, don't be surprised if you go in the BIOS and it's not in there, but hopefully if it's 6th gen or later, then it should be in there. Now for AMD, again, there was a lot less info about this for which CPUs had it. From my research, it seems that before Ryzen, again, Ryzen, apparently all of them should have TPM built in, but for those before Ryzen, it seems like at least some of their APUs had TPM built in. So APU, Advanced Processing Unit, basically a CPU with graphics on it. Some of their APUs at least did have this. I don't know about their CPUs before then, it might just be kind of spotty or not universal. And specifically, I was able to find three architectures mentioned that at least some of them do have a FTPM. And those are the Bima, Molins, and Carrizo architectures. I don't know if I'm pronouncing those right. And that information is from a Microsoft article that was linked from some obscure forum post. And that version of the article wasn't even around. So I looked in the web archive and like 2016, yes, this article on Microsoft.com specifically mentions those three APU architectures as supporting FTPM. Now, I am not sure if anything else at the time has FTPM. If it's that old of an AMD CPU, it's just apparently some of those do. So what that means is if you have an FX series CPU, you might not have FTPM. All right, so now what do you do if your CPU does not have firmware TPM support? Well, your motherboard may actually have a connector where you can plug in a physical discrete TPM chip. If it does, obviously you're gonna have to go out and buy one. Usually they're in like the 30 to 40, $50 range-ish, but it's gonna depend. And you're also gonna have to make sure to get the right one because TPM 1.2 and 2.0 are not backwards compatible. If your computer only sports 1.2, you can't put a 2.0 in there and the same goes the other way around. For example, my motherboard, the Rampage 5 Extreme does actually have a TPM connector. I just never put one in there. If you don't know what motherboard you have, obviously you're gonna have to figure that out. If you go to the Windows system information settings menu or whatever, I believe for me at least, it says the name of the motherboard 
as baseboard products so you can try looking there. Then what you'll have to do is go and look up the user manual for your motherboard and basically just do a search through it and see if it mentions TPM anywhere and see if it has a connector for a TPM chip and then you're gonna have to open up the computer and look there and see if it, there's anything there or not. And if it does, that's great, but it's not the end of it. Again, like I mentioned, you're gonna have to know whether your motherboard supports 1.2 and 2.0 and even if you know that, you're gonna have to know what kind of pin connector to get because I've seen multiple, whether it's a 14 pin or 20 pin, you're gonna have to look and see which one your motherboard has and also there might be different pinouts. And this might not be as easy to figure out as it sounds because in my motherboard manual, for example, it doesn't even mention whether it's 1.2 or 2.0. I basically had to do a Google search for what official TPM module Asus was pushing at the time for being compatible with that motherboard and then had to look up what type that was and then was able to infer that it is only 1.2. But at least in the motherboard manual, it does show for me the pinout, which means it'll show all the pins and what each pin is used for because this might be different depending on the manufacturer of the TPM module. For example, if you buy an ASRock that's made for ASRock motherboards, it might not necessarily work in a Asus motherboard even if it has the same number of pins. But again, you could of course just contact the manufacturer though they might not have all this information if it's like a really old computer anymore. And that might be another challenge that you'll come across if your motherboard only supports 1.2 or maybe a weird pin number or something, they might not make as many 1.2 modules anymore, or maybe none at all for that type of connector count, it might be hard to find one. So what do you do if your computer doesn't have firmware TPM and it doesn't even have a connector for a hardware TPM, or maybe you just can't even find one that's compatible with your motherboard? Well, I hate to say it, but you just might not be able to install Windows 11 and just, you'll just have to deal with it. Now I have supposedly seen some workarounds that involve replacing certain files in the Windows 11 installer with another one from Windows 10 and it kind of tricks it into installing it anyway, but I don't know if that would affect any features and break things. That sounds to me like it would probably be more risk than it's worth. But at least now, either way, you'll know whether a computer already supports it or maybe you know what you have to do to make it support it or if it just doesn't at all and you just won't be able to have Windows 11. So hopefully this video was informative to you guys. If you want to subscribe, I make a couple new videos a week, so it should be worth it. And also I will be making a video about some of the more significant features that were either announced in that announcement video or maybe more hidden. So I wanted to get this video out first though because there was so much confusion about it. If you guys do want to keep watching, the next video I'd recommend that is out now is the one where I was going through and testing that Windows 11 leaked build. Obviously that is not fully what we saw in the announcement video, but yeah, there's some cool stuff you can check out in there. So anyway, thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.